You never get a completely white surface back, but you get whiter than the dark that's around it. So I would have my drawing, and this was kind of a vague drawing. I'm lucky I found it again. But you know, it's, uh, everyone knows what it is when they look at it. You know, it might not look like a photograph. So I have my drawing. So even on this big guy, <clears throat> everywhere I wanted to be able to paint on it, I had to dip it in the water and put, the, put water on here. Now the last place I put water is going to be <clears throat> the whitest. When you've sprayed with that Krylon fixative a lot of times, several layers, or you're gonna to have to spray it at least twice. And then I test it to see if it's really not gonna come off. It does resist the paint. So it acts as, in itself as a resist. So sometimes that's kind of frustrating because I want more color you know, than what I'm seeing. You know, I'd hope for more color and that's all I'm getting. So we'll just do a couple. And even though it's a, a resist, this cold press rough is just that, you know, it's, it's what it's supposed to be. So I'm just using some turquoise. It's, I don't know if you care about brands and names, um, but this is a turquoise color. So as I put it on, it's resisting and it's kind of got all these, it looks like dry brush. And see, sometimes I'm perfectly fine with that. I like it, you know. So we'll do a little bit more of that. Oops. I like to wet it first. And so it flows a little bit. Oh, hello. That's okay. I talk to my paintings, too. Um, I don't have anybody else in the house to talk to. I might as, well, might as well talk to them. And, you know, they seldom argue with me. Give me a little trouble sometimes, but... Okay, so we need a little bit more. And I'm using pure color for the most part because um, it's... It, you know, it's so hard to get it to cover. I have in desperation at time gone to, I've tried ink and, and that holds better, you know, or acrylics. But most of the time, you know, I just, I'm pretty happy with it, whatever's happening. Let's see what that is. So does it act a little like UPO? Well, it, UPO, it'll really run, you no, know? No, but I meant the way now that it's resisting. Well, the UPO, you know, it really runs on the UPO. This won't run at all. It's almost like, you know, your dry brush and everything is what it feels like oh, okay. on there. And um, I've done some horses and different things on, on the UPO, and I really, I kind of like the way it, it runs sometimes. It's just great fun, and it does crazy stuff. And I think what I like about this, too, is that it's, I mean, it's a challenge, obviously, and you never quite know what's going to happen. So I, I like that about it. I like uh, the challenge, and I like trying something new and different. So I'm just seeing where, where I can put some color on his face. One side of his face more than the other. Still trying to here and there you know, leave um, some, some of the white that I don't want to lose at all. My chest, not getting much, I might have to get really a little more loose with that. Put a little of it. Remember, you always want it three places. How many times have you heard that? <laughs> Put your color three. Three plays. I paint with my fingers too. I forgot that. That's one of my favorite brushes. <laughs> so we're just putting some color and then I have another, a, cu a couple more I'll do too. So I think, wait, more color down here. More purple. I didn't charge the, I didn't, oh, I decided not to bring my spray. 
but a lot of times it helps if you just spray the colors you know you're going to use, you know, that way they'll react or get charged up or activate, I guess is the right word. Yeah. So, um, do you do another supplement after you spray the I do. I started doing more charcoal this, or not charcoal, more acrylic this winter. I started doing real bright colored acrylics, you know, and that lifts your spirits a lot, you know, looking at those bright, amazing colors, and um, they seem to be real popular right now, those, uh, uh, hello. Um, those real bright, they're, sort of, they're nothing realistic about them, the crazy colors. And I've sold some, so then that makes you always think, well, maybe I should do more of those. It's sold. A little more of the same color up there. Want some there. The charcoal powder won't move much. You know, like sometimes you wish it would, but it's pretty much where it's going to stay. So I'm going to take a little black because I actually want this, well, see what it does. It's, it's like, yeah, you go ahead, try. Put some black down in here. Now, if I wanted to, I'll show you one other thing I can do. Say if I didn't really want this to look like such a line here, see this hard edge? So then I would bring in some of this, and I'm just trying to make it look like, I don't know, a softer edge. Because I wanted that shadow there, but I didn't want a real, real hard edge. So you can sort of camouflage it a little bit like that, and this one over here. Can you paint over the charcoal? You can, and I have done that, and I'll still, it'll still show through like charcoal, but the texture, I've done that with, I've got a, like a purple one that I had a white horse, but then, I don't know, I just wasn't liking the black background, so I went and, and uh, made it purple, just a big, big old paintbrush and the whole background was purple. So, I mean, you know, you can paint over it, you know, black is black, but you can put a color that'll show up in all these white places, in other words. So that's, I will put a little of the purple in here. How long does it usually take you to do one? Oh, they, because the painting is kind of minimal, it doesn't take long at all. Mm -hmm. Like this one's, oh, not his eye. Wait a minute. I was going to say this one's almost done, probably, but I mean, his eye. I didn't bring, mm, yeah, I probably bought, brought, no, I don't think I brought white paint, but so, sometimes, you know, um, like a gesso or I use a white ink to make pupil of the eye. So we got to have a, let me, let me, what's your story? Use this one, a little water first. And then to get something smaller point, you just tw twirl your brush a little bit like that. Do you still have horses on? Hmm. Well, my last baby, <laughs> I had him 25 years. He died when he was 34. Wow. And that's quite long lived for a horse. Interesting enough, I had a heart attack that night. It was just more than I could take losing him. And I'd been on the barn floor with him for like two and a half hours. So when I got home and I knew I had all this pain be between my shoulders, now I'm a nurse, you know, you think you, it's just nothing's ever gonna happen to you, right? It didn't go away and it didn't go away. And I thought, gee, what is, I just don't get it. So I called my son-in-law that's a firefighter. And I'm getting other people's opinions. What should I do? And I hadn't felt well when I left the barn and my daughters were there. And the oldest daughter said, Mom, call me if you need me, you know, at, you know, tonight. So I called her. <laughs> and we went to the hospital, the little Miami Valley South, and then they transferred me down to uh, 
the big hospital downtown, the valley, and I had, you know, like a stent put in. But I always blame it on, well, and even the heart, the, um, the heart surgeon said, that's what we call broken heart syndrome, because there was kind of like no history of anything, and um, so, yep, had to say goodbye. So that was hard, that is no joke. Uh, very hard to say goodbye to him. You know, they know if you've ever had an animal like that. They know all your secrets. They don't tell any of them. And they love you in spite of whatever. So that's kind of really special. I wanted to leave. Did you paint him as well? I have. Um, and uh, I n never, never show it. That's just between him and me. But... Uh, yeah, he's a little brown horse. They call it a bay with a black mane and tail, a little white star, and two little white feet in the back. And uh, my daughter rode him in shows when she was young. And then when she lost interest in the, the horse and went away to college, really, he became my trail horse. And so we spent a lot of time together, he and I. So it was special. A little darker here, maybe on that. So it was a, it's hard, you know, when you have a pet, you usually outlive them. And uh, I mean, they're wonderful company, and it's just hard to, you know, to give them up. I had a cat once for 18 years, and a dog for <laughs> 16 years. My pets have been, I've been blessed to have them, you know to have long lives so that we could be together a long time. And I always said the dog helped raise my kids. He was a good one, a German Shepherd, and very protective. So if he was out in the backyard, which was fenced with the little kids, I knew he was safe. I mean, they were safe. It didn't matter. There was no one coming in that yard, you know, that, uh, that he didn't approve of. So. And it's funny, he learned to uh, ring the doorbell to come back in. We lived in a neighborhood for a while while my husband was going to law school. It wasn't the best of neighborhoods, I guess. We were hurting for money and whatever. So um, every once in a while, I had a neighbor who would call me and say, I think there's someone out on the street and go around and look. I'm afraid they're going to look in my window. Would you let your dog out? <laughs> So whoever that was is probably still running. He was a black German Shepherd with the whitest teeth. And boy, when he, when he growled, it was serious. But he learned that if he rang the doorbell, that's what made us come to the door and let him back in. We'd have company sitting there and the doorbell would ring and it'd be 10.30 at night and they'd say, I wonder who that could be. And I said, that's a dog. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I let him out. And so. What time is it already? We doing okay? For time, we're doing okay, right? We're doing good. Okay, we're doing good. Okay, because yeah. I wanted to show you some of the other one too. This one. But don't be afraid to use your fingers. I like to use my fingers. Part of the fun, getting dirty. Mm, let's put some purple here too. So basically, you know, I might fiddle around with it a little bit and try to get more color to show up. But that's, you know, kind of gives you the idea of what I might do with something like that. I just wanted to show movement and um, that's kind of all I'm trying to do is just suggest uh, the mane and tail flowing in the air, you know, and, uh, but you can see how the, what it does when you try to paint on it. So. When I do the, I need a little blue here. Uh, when I do the racehorses, I probably won't even use water. I'll just use pure color. So it'll be a little darker. Well, I think that's it for that one. I have allergies. I don't have a cold, but. I swear, wearing the mask makes it so much worse. So here's, on, on this side of the page is a flower 
And that's like when I started, you know, using this technique for the background. What happened over here? Oh, that's okay. And um, some of that. Yeah. Uh, hold the painting, what you just did up for us and see it. No. You want to see it this like, way? Like that, yeah. Like I said, I might go, you know, back and fool a little bit with colors, but mm -hmm. I wanted to show you what Very the... Nice. Do you teach this? Please? Do you teach this? Well, I'm teaching a watercolor class at Rosewood right now. Um, but this technique, because I taught it, I've only taught it once, a workshop in Arkansas, believe it or not, and you know, just so we could go outside. Mm -hmm. So what you need is just good weather and to be able to go outside because you're gonna throw this charcoal and buckets of water. <laughs> so, you know, not every place is conducive to that. So I use my side yard and so I'll just make a few. Marks on the. I was a little bit late. How do you keep the black from getting on the white area? That's water, pure water. You have to have a drawing, and then with pure water on your brush, nothing else, you have to put as water, 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 water. The water is the resist, just like a mascoid or a frisket would be. Water, water, water. And the areas that dry first, they're going to get a little darker than the wet ones. The one that gets the most water, the last time you put the water on, that should be the whitest area. Pure color, like the cobalt. Oh, first you gotta, boy, I missed that sprayer that I didn't bring. That, but that's okay. You just, if I know what I'm going, I'm going to use cobalt. It would help if you got clear water, bond. That's okay, I'll just get these, I'm you gonna use, it. huh? And I'm gonna use Joe's Red, I think. Pardon me, I'm sorry, talking over you. Did you bring your sprayer? I can fill it up in I, water. I don't think I did. I meant to. I thought about it. it. You know how it's just easier to charge a color and just go tch, tch, tch. Okay. So, this one. And I always like brushes that are have more spring to them. And I feel like the, the um, eh, what's the word? In other words, it doesn't have to be sable or squirrel or something like that. Just, I like, uh, the artificial. And by the way, that brush that I put water on the paper with, normally I don't use it for anything else. I've written on there charcoal and it's an Ace Hardware Wooster silver tip or something like that. Uh, even though I wash it afterwards, I'm going to run through it like I did with the horses to make it look like water going across and then remember shadows coming or reflections coming down. So I get the, get this a little bit wet. And this one was going to be cobalt blue. So let's see if we got any color yet. Yeah. So you drew that picture earlier? Yes. Yeah, not here tonight. Right. No, because I wanted to throw the powder and everything. So this guy, I'm using pure color now without much water at all. So that's showing up really well. Did you spray that one yet? It's been sprayed with fixative. So I'm almost surprised and very happy that it's showing up that well. I'm doing this without my glasses. Isn't that strange? Why would a person who wears glasses? <laughs> I don't wear them for distance, but I usually wear them up close. So what will just... So I'm first dealing with here what the jockey be wearing and all their colorful silks and everything, more so than they ever used to be. I had a lady one time I did a commission for I mean, this was the strangest thing. Um, I went to the uh, farm, which at that time was on Nut Road, right down the street from where I lived. And um, I was to look at those, she had race horses. So I was to look at her horses, and if you get too big of a puddle, just a little edge of your Kleenex can soak up some of that paint. You don't have to blot it. You just kind of say, please, would you climb up into that Kleenex? See how it does that? Isn't that cute, the way it does it? Well, anyway. Mom, do you just need reading classes? Please? Do you just need reading classes? Oh, you know, I have them in my purse. You are so nice. I mean, I do have them. I could, I could stand up and walk over there and get them. No, really. 
They're there. I'll be okay. I just thank you, though. So I, well, so I go to the barn, and um, I, they bring out this little foal. She wanted me to do the foal and the mare featured, and then do. It was a surprise for her, her for her husband. With in their silks, which happen to be purple silks, you know they have different patterns and stuff, and. Um, make that horse winning a race, all, all of that combined. So I thought, well, this will be fun. You know, a lot of times, if you take a commission, the, the interesting thing is that you'll, you'll be doing something that you wouldn't have done otherwise, and, and it's, it's good. It's good that you're trying something different. So I have my photos, I go home, and I, I've got race horses across the top, and I know her purple silks, it was a big, big one, you know, full sheet of, cold press, or archers, cold press. And, um, you know, I, because it was such a big deal, it was so cute, the, the men that worked at the barn, you know, stable hands, whatever they're called, they brought the horses out for me and I took my pictures. So I get home and I'm working away and, but a lot of, sometimes, I don't do it as much now, probably because of this lady, <laughs> but, I'll have somebody come and look at it. You know, this is what I got so far. Are we going in the right direction here? Are you, am I getting it? And I was, I had, she had been there once already. And she said, well, the mare should be darker. She's light now because it's summertime and they do, they're, when they're let out, their fur lightens. People know they're shaking heads. They, they do lighten up. I'm okay, no problem, right? Watercolor, you can go darker. You can't go lighter. So. That's okay. So I'm working away, and um, she she comes back, and I'm thinking, I got this. I'm done. You know, I'm finished. And uh, she said, Well, the foal, he doesn't have that stripe going over one nose. And I said, Well, I took a picture of him. I got the picture out. I said, Yes, he does. His blaze comes down here, and then it goes across one side. I was out. She said, I don't care. I don't like it. Paint over it. <laughs> so I'm like, I, I did, but it was odd to me that that was, you know, the horse, and that's the way the little guy was made. God made him, and she didn't like it. I don't care. I don't like it. Paint over it. So I did, <laughs> and he liked it. As he said later, he was surprised and liked it. So that was good. I'm okay. surprised you didn't say, well, where's that line that goes? <laughs> yeah, and that, you know, it's like. Well, okay. You don't like it, so. Got a little brown on I'm a little brown on the boots, and I'm just doing their silks, and then I'll do the body of the, the horses. So a little bit of his, oh, burn umber, how about that? Raw umber, maybe. So I'm using pure color and painting really heavy, like a puddle of it, and that way it'll, it'll show up better. And I have to decide what color. I may not want, in the photo, the guy with the blue is a white horse. And then we got two different shades of brown horses over there. And I'm thinking, making one horse gray and one brown and one white. And I'm actually going to make this horse white, I think. Don't ask me why. I may regret it later. But. So I'll go ahead and I'll do, I'll show you the colors on the next ones. We're going to be this guy like my favorite bumblebee, yellow and black. The, their silks alone, I asked this one lady that, to please go in the jockey's locker room or whatever and just take me a picture of their silks hanging there, you know, just their beautiful, that amazing color. I said, if you would just please do that. And she said she would, but I've never received it from her. I just think that would make just a really neat uh, painting. Just, there's silks hanging there, you know? Mm -hmm. And this guy, 
a little more yellow in here. Oh, down in there, maybe. It's how much yellow. Oh, and one other thing I do when it's still when it's still wet. And I think I'll do that. And I think part of the shirt. I'll make some of that black. And like that one. Oh, that's cute. Even this little hoodie thing that they wear. Some of them, they don't like to see the horses coming up behind, beside them, and they'll have pretty good blinders there mm -hmm. so that they don't, you know, go nuts and throw the jockey or something. So he, he's wearing this. I used to, I still do like to watch videos sometimes of people painting and Bob Ross and the little friends he would add. This tree needs a little friend over here. <laughs> and his family still keeps that alive running the videos here and there. So this should end up having some nice color. So then we're going to go American Journey Joe's Red. This is what I was and I did wet my brush, but it's a damp brush. I'm not wetting the paper first. And I got a lot of paint on there, so I'm gonna get some of that paint off. And then, is it right down the middle here? Oh, I forgot what I also started to say, was that, see, I don't know how well it shows up, but while that was still wet, remember it hasn't dried yet? I took and I, I went like this to make it look like another helmet and far away in the background. And then I put one over here, and sometimes I'll paint those, sometimes I just leave them like that. You know, I want them to, to look like, you know, you can use your imagination and think that may be another horse, you know, coming up behind them. It's kind of interesting, the jockeys are wearing several pairs of goggles because the mud that comes up usually and dirt just plain dirt and mud well they can't even see then and so they throw those goggles off they peel them off one at a time they might have three pair on there throwing them off I took my daughter out of school one time I, see, I could probably go to jail for that now but we went to the races <laughs> I felt like going to the races I didn't want to go along she was always up for that, so we went to the track. Every once in a while she'll say, Mom, remember that time you took me to the racetrack? <laughs> like, yeah, I, I actually, I sure do remember that. Did you tell them it was a doctor's appointment? <laughs> actually, yeah, I did. <laughs> it, it's for her mother's health, her mother's <laughs> mental health. We're, we're, we're actually going to the track today. <laughs> Crazy stuff. We were we were both crazy about the horses, so that was a real good excuse to do some crazy stuff. And put another one in there just for fun. And it seems like I should be doing something there. All right, so there he is. Now he's wearing a red little hoodie. So we'll get that in there real quick. He's got a little triangle in the center. Of course, nowadays, I think that they also, just like in the race cars, they are wearing a lot of advertising <laughs> on them, you know, on their shirts, on the, on the tack, wherever they can put something, Coca-Cola sign or something. But the pure color takes pretty good. Oh, 
Well, I'll tell you a story. One thing's got me so against bumblebees and yellow jackets. Is this a, re a voice recording as well? No, it's a video. Oh, yay. <laughs> <laughs> I never used to curse or swear until I started playing golf, and, and my life changed forever. Um, boy, my mom was really against that. You did not say the, quote, bad word ever. Well, but anyway, what happened with the bumblebees is my dad, when I was probably five, um, he had an old car in the driveway that he wanted to like refurbish and fix up. This was really a long time ago, so that car would have had to been from the earliest 40s, if not even earlier than that, you know? I, I get that mixed up with cars and stuff. But, um, so it's just sitting there in the driveway. And one day, my brother and I were pretty bored. And he's like, let's see, where, where are you? Um, I write on the edge of the pallets, and this is a fresh, clean pallet. I didn't want to bring my, oops, hello. The one that I would use usually, let's see, because it's in such atrocious, shape. Oh, that is not what I wanted. Okay. So anyway, we, we, get, we get out there and we're messing around the old car. So it, it sits off the natural driveway, off to the side, and Dad's going to work on it. And of course, my brother gets at the wheel. I got this. You push, <laughs> right? So no problem. So I go back towards the back wheels and put my hand under kind of like the wheel well so I can really push, you know. I don't know where we thought we were going. <laughs> don't know. But that was a yellow jacket nest. Uh -huh. A nest. And I, could, I remember feeling their fur to this day. And I was stung so many times. My little hand looked like a catcher's mitt. You know what a catcher's mitt looks like? Oh, man. Thought I was... I was hurting for a while. Never did that again either. I had a healthy respect for them. Oh, come on. Ever since, you know. Maybe those hornets prevented you from getting run over by a car. Well, you're right. It was God's plan. <laughs> you know, you think you're going somewhere. Well, let me, show, let me tell you, this is not working out. So, uh, I'm just kind of looking for a minute. When oh, yeah, you, that was... When did you first start painting? Like, how old were you when you first painting? started painting and drawing and all that? Oh, you know, that's just all I can remember from my childhood. Some of my happiest days were on my grandma's little back porch off the breakfast room. It was all shaded, screened in, and coloring there, and drawing, and coloring, and drawing. And uh, that's all I ever wanted to do. And then... Um, that was, now think about what the 60s were like. Free love was coming in. There were hippies, okay? So when I graduated from high school, I had won the gold medal for art for the archdiocese. I thought art was my future, but the nuns suggested, and that was okay, really. Uh, that, that was rather an unseemly career, but if that's what I really, really wanted to do, and my mom was okay with it, that they would make me a portfolio and I could go to Columbus or Cincinnati. They felt that it wouldn't be a problem. And, um, but, you know, mom got to thinking about it and at that point in time, she was a single mom, dad had left and um, she got to thinking, oh, this is my baby girl and I'm gonna send her off to this den of iniquity so instead, I became a nurse. Uh, at that time in life, you could be a nurse, a secretary, a teacher. That was it. That, career choices, that was it. Or a nun. Oh, there you go, a nun. I even worried one time that I had been called, and uh, I talked to the priest, and I'm crying because I don't want to go. <laughs> I'm in the confessional, and I, I'm saying, I, I think maybe I have a vocation. You know, I was devastated. He said, now listen. <laughs> he said, if you have a vocation, you simply get happier and happier and more joyful as you're drawn to it. You probably don't have <laughs> calling. Oh, I was so relieved. I was just like, oh, thank goodness, because that's not where I want to go. 
But, you know, you're so easily, you know, I am anyway, but kids, you know, you just get an idea. Well, the nuns would go around. I went to a Catholic grade school, Catholic high school, all girls, Julianne at that time, Catholic nursing school, Good Sam Samaritan School of Nursing. So the nuns would, you had a little mailbox, you know, everybody had a little mailbox. They would leave notes in there. Is God calling you? <laughs> That's what got to me. I'd be like, I'm not sure. <laughs> you know, maybe. <laughs> I don't, I'm, I, maybe. And I, do we have to talk about it? Because, you know, maybe he won't notice if I don't show up. I don't know. <laughs> I'll just slip on by there. So what I'm doing now is putting a little black paint where I wish it wasn't still white, you know, just a few areas. The more you fool with it, probably the worse it is. Like most things, you know, that you paint or do, it's like when I'm brushing it after it's wet and before it's dry. Sometimes I've, you know, just taken it a little bit too far. I want a big fat brush like this one, I think. So I want to paint the horses a little bit. So this little guy is going to be kind of a, what have we got? Oh, that's gamboge. Oh yeah, it's pretty yellow in it. Like, boy, don't you miss? And then I can't understand what that other color was that I, I got such a weird. Let me take a look. Raw umber, and it looked black. Uh, that's a pretty dark color, but oh, see, I'll have all these contaminates, and then I go home and I have to clean up my messes. Boy, that's mm. so. I want my brown horsey to be just a little bit redder, maybe. Yeah, that's better. So, just yeah. Okay, so I've decided that this guy's going to be brown. And I'm not probably going to use as much pure color. I'm going to smear it around a little bit. I'll go back and I'll be lifting and not happy. Okay. I'm a great lifter and scrubber. I used to talk to Karen Benedetti about that. Oh, you shouldn't be scrubbing. Well, she never would tell you what you should or shouldn't do. She's so sweet. Um, but she would just laugh. Oh, yeah, that's okay too. A little bit too much, you know, scrubbing. But I move the paint that way, it makes me happy. You gotta do what you like, you know, and you just, and then trying to remember to leave some white. Let me get out there, maybe. A little bit lighter. So, she lives in Baltimore now, of all places, but that's where her son is, so it's wonderful. It's good that she's there. <laughs>